back. It's a Fulbright Friday here with LP and LT. How are you, LP? I'm doing well. It's a bit hot. So, <laughs> Kieran, my husband, got me a a tile. He, he chatted me this morning. He was a like, tile? Hey, on my way. I was like, I got you a tile. And I was like, okay. I'm like, what's a tile? So he's taken the liberty of buying this, like, it's a transponder. It's like this little square that goes on your keys. Oh, so you never lose them. Yeah, but then the thing is with the tile, he's decided to... But then do you need your phone for the tile? Because then you also lose your phone. putting it on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> so that's news with me. What's new with you? I oh, lose my keys great. all the time, and now I will never lose and my keys. And your phone. And on a phone. very regular basis. On a very regular basis. Wow, that is pretty exciting. But like I said, he no longer trusts you to Yeah, but he's solving problems. It's only, I'm actually surprised you haven't gotten one previously. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. It was it like just, only a matter of time. I didn't actually know they had these things, but now they do. Yeah. Because don't you also use the thing that, t like, or you, maybe you don't, but that um, you can use for, like, um, detergent or something. If you're low, you, like, push a button. Oh, I've orders. seen that. Gimmicky. Yeah. Or is it on Amazon? Yeah. No, it's um, Amazon, right? Yeah. Where, it's, I mean, in everything in life, you'd have buttons. It's easy enough just to... Yeah. Because John, my husband wanted to... Do you have to, that? No. He wanted to get those, but I was like, that's so ridiculous. Yeah. I was like, you've reached, you've reached a low point Okay. Here's a question. Laziness. They have the tiles for Tide, detergent, maybe toilet paper. I don't know. Right. Okay. So if you were to say, what would be one tile that if you could have it in your house... And the you tile could, is to like reorder something. Reorder or something, but you could something. get it for free. Like, what would be? And you can't say like, "Oh, I have a couch every seven years." But like, I already know what mine would be. I would have a tile that would be gummy bears. Mm. You know, so you just go in there, and gummy bears always appear. I was gonna say we do have like the peanut M and M's, and every time we have a, my, one of my friends visits, so like she knows where they're located, and she just goes in and starts eating them. And then it's disappointing for us because we keep them in storage for our ice cream sundaes. And then it's really disappointing when you don't have any left. So you have to hide it when you're pregnant. Kind of like we're, getting, we're kind of getting to that point. You're like, okay. But I'm she knows gonna... like what cabinet mm -hmm. it's in and then starts eating them and like yeah. mixing the snacks. But anyway. That's a true friend. Yeah. When you start hiding snacks from your friend, you know you've hit that point where you're like really close. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, today we are talking about language evaluations. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about language evaluations. Language evaluations. <laughs> really Bonjour important part. Not. Mm, what was that? Buongiorno. Oh, buongiorno. Buongiorno. A very important part. Buenvenidos. And like prego, you use for everything. Just you like, do. I know. It's like one of those words. And if you actually try to find the translation, it's like hoya sex. No one knows. <laughs> yeah, no one knows. <laughs> like, um, hoya sex. So, so. prego. <laughs> uh, so we're here talking about language evaluations, uh, which are a important point, a important point, important component of the application. Uh, so do you want to start it off? Talk about it. Off? Yeah, sure. Okay, so in almost all instances, you're going to need to bring some, even if it's a novice, level of the host country language to the table. There's a couple of ways that you can complete the kind of language um, requirements in your application. One of the most important ways is through the language evaluation, which in almost all instances is required. Could you think of one where it's not required? You should still do one, even if it's I mean, if you're going optional. Like UK study, you're not. Going to <laughs> Canada, <laughs> UK, no language required. No language required. Okay. Um, and also some of the East Asian uh, countries True. for like ETAs, right. like you don't need language. Yep. But you can find that out, and it's really important that you find that out by going to your specific grant page. There will be a foreign language section on that page that will say the level of language um, that's required. So you are expected to ha to demonstrate that language through a language evaluation if it is like if proficiency is required, if advanced language proficiency is required, whatever that may be. Yeah. So check out your country page. There's typically only three levels: novice or some, intermediate, and advanced. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of range, and we get a question often, especially from those in the School of Foreign Service, that are like, "Oh, does my proficiency carry from you know my undergrad exam or whatever?" No. This is a completely different thing. Um, you cannot use other language uh, evaluations or certifications or proficiencies and kind of submit that for the Fulbright. The Fulbright has its own process. And that process involves you identifying someone that has the credibility uh, and the kind of knowledge to be able to assess the language that you need in order to apply for your Fulbright. Mm -hmm. And it's really pretty straightforward. Yeah. In terms of what they're doing. 
Yeah, so basically you can you can also find this person. Oftentimes um, the language department's here at Georgetown. If you haven't recently had a professor who would do the language evaluation for you, you can reach out to the administrator of like the state of the Spanish and Portuguese department and say that you would be needing someone to complete a um, language evaluation form for you for Fulbright, and they can then put you in touch with the person who could do that. Um, but it functions similar to how you register recommenders in the system. You have to identify who that person is, make sure that they're ready to serve as your language evaluator before you just register them. Um, but you'll input that person's name and email into your online application. They will receive um, a link to the form that they fill out, which is basically like a checkbox form. Very, it's like very pretty basic, simple. Yeah. It's probably take like five, 10 minutes for yeah. someone to complete. Yeah. Um, you do not need to be there while they complete it. And then they'll upload it to your application. Yeah. Basically, it's going to assess your ability in thinking, reading, writing, understanding, something like that. That's yeah. probably not Oral, right. Written, There's some boxes. I'm reading. sure Steve will help us right yeah, here with right. The, what that is. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions about that, let us know. The one thing before we talk about um, other things that I want to make sure that we get across is that you have the option, I think, <laughs> you may have to double check that, of um, opting into a language evaluation where you get to evaluate your proficiency or level. Mm -hmm. And even if you're having someone attest and review your language, go ahead and especially if you have other secondary or you know familiarity with a second or a third language that that host country also has. And as long as it's relevant. To the right, country, okay, yeah. so relevancy is there, right? You're not gonna, well, right. You're going to submit a Chinese language evaluation. Like if you're doing for, a Germany ETA, yeah. you're not going to like do a language evaluation in Mandarin. Yeah, like exactly. So, um, but this is your chance to sort of either extend your knowledge or sort of show that you have more languages, or it's your ability to talk about in that form because there's a text box on all the ways that you're going to be developing that language between now and the time that you would begin the award because that is really how you're assessed. You're assessed on having met the level of language by the time the award begins, which in most instances is September 2020. Mm -hmm. So you should be thinking about ways to continue to engage and learn the language regardless of whatever regardless. level you're at. Okay, anything else? No, I think that's it. drop. Yes. Now we have reached the fan club portion and we're doing things a little bit differently because we talked too much in the beginning stages and we know that like there we are very talking. few people still hanging on with us. So LP will ask this question and then we both get one sentence to respond and no follow up. How often do you people watch? Every day. I was gonna say all the time. Done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how can you not people watch? Uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, especially right? in just summer in DC, it's like all the people descend and you just can't help yourself. Yeah. Except at Georgetown when they're like not here. Oh, there's a lot of people watching happening with all the high school that's camps true. that oh, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, Some interesting, okay. you know, new styles. Okay, so what's really exciting is we're going to announce a prize. What was that? I don't know. I'm just like wiping your face. Yes. Um, we're announcing a prize competition. Woohoo! Woohoo! Win prizes. It's really helpful. Yeah, we love prizes. So here's the deal. If you have already created your Fulbright online application and selected Georgetown University as your endorsing institution, you have already been automatically entered into a grand prize drawing. So this is really for those of you that have yet to create your online account with the Fulbright online application platform. If you haven't done that yet, now is the time to do that. You have until next Friday to create your account, get it set up with Georgetown, and then at that point we will on the air. Next no, Friday? I don't know. We can't do it by next Friday. It has to be earlier than that. Okay. By next Wednesday? Monday. <laughs> by Monday. <laughs> So people who are watching, who are actually, can you put the date on here? Yeah, like who are, who, are, who are watching this, you will benefit from this because you'll be able to set it up over the weekend. You'll be still entered. So by Monday at 5 p.m. Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern please create time. Your account so that you can find out by watching next week's episode whether you won the big grand prize. Yeah. And we're not going to tell you what that is, but it's a big grand prize. It's a big, it's a big one. Yeah.